You ever notice those signs that they put on the electrical poles that say high voltage? Like, why do I need to know about it when it's way up there? Why don't they put up signs when the voltage falls down where I am? That's when I'm concerned. If it's way up there, that's fine. I'm, I'm not going to touch that. That's only really an issue for the squirrels and the birds. But they seem fine too, so I, don't, I just don't think we need those signs. I've also seen, <clears throat> excuse me, I've also seen signs that say no outlet driving in some neighborhoods and like, I don't know if that's for people that are considering buying a house there. Like, cause then you'd want to know there's no electricity, but like, why advertise that? Like, yeah, we, we don't have electricity because I don't know, is that like not having a TV? Is that something people are proud of? We just, uh, uh, what do we do without electricity? We we have a Flintstones car? I don't know. Cars aren't electric, though. What's electric? Nothing in those houses. Some other fun signs, uh, maybe less fun. There's a lot of disagreements these days where people all get together in the streets, next to the streets, hold up signs saying what they believe. And I don't know, people are, sometimes people get upset that protesters are blocking the streets. But I don't know, I've seen them all my life. It doesn't really bother me. Most of the time though, the ones that have been constant my whole life, they're on the side of the road. They're not blocking it. And they're there every single time this, is going, this issue is happening. And every time I see it, I'm like, yeah, they're right. But then I don't really do anything about it, so I don't know that the protest is very effective. You've probably seen them too, because they're everywhere. The weird thing is, the protesters themselves aren't there. They just kind of leave the signs on the side of the road and then go about their business. You've seen them. There's two different variations. They're not all that creative. And construction. And road work. But every time you see it, you're like, yeah, I had enough of this. I've been driving through this behind a semi with a stinky something or other in it for the past five miles, and I'm ready to get my own lane and get out of here, get wherever I'm going. But again, all they say is they want it to end. How do we make it end? How do we help? Who do we donate to? I don't know. I just keep driving. Another fun thing about driving is when you stop for gas. Now that they've got the, the gas pumps that talk to you, not necessarily out loud, but the, if you actually read the words on them, a lot of them will say, thank you for choosing us. Even if you're at a kind of remote gas station, so what I like to do when it says, thank you for choosing, is I look around. And half the time, all you see is road and that gas station where I am. So like, did I choose you? Or were you just the only option? But you're welcome, I guess. So especially now that we're trying to stay away from other people, you might find yourself driving in the car alone. And if you're going a long way, you can get kind of sleepy and that can get unsafe. So one of the things I do to keep myself entertained is I look at the GPS, figure out how much time I have left. I'm more concerned about the time than I am about the route because I often drive the same places. But still, I look it up to see the time, like, oh, I'm gonna get there at nine o'clock and then an hour later I'll check it again and but I don't really see estimated time I see time to beat so like it says nine o'clock I check it again in an hour now it says 8 58 I'm like yes 
I knew I could hold it a little bit longer. Didn't need to stop at that one gas station all by itself. But then you get stuck in that construction. You look at it again like, oh man, now I'm at 9.03. That semi cost me five minutes. I don't know how I'm gonna make that up. Luckily, my soda bottle's empty. That'll, that'll get me a couple minutes. Get me back on track. I still prefer driving by myself than uh, catching a ride. Like, like now it's kind of weird getting, in the, even more weird getting in the car with a stranger. Like I don't like it in the first place, but now you don't know what people are doing to stay safe and keep other people safe. So last time I pulled up, uh, wait for a cab, guy pulls up, I thought maybe I recognized him. He rolled down the window. He's wearing a mask, so I mean that's probably a good sign. But then he looks at me, I think. And he goes, You have hailed me for the last time. And so yeah, I haven't taken a cab since. I don't want to risk that. Another fun thing I've noticed about Star Wars recently is I happened to watch it during the time when no one was getting haircuts. And I had the same hair as Luke Skywalker, but like, I, for me it wasn't a choice. But also, it was uh, the, uh, the one where they're on the ice planet, so everyone's locked inside because you can't go outside because it's frozen, which maybe isn't that different. So maybe it wasn't because Star Wars was made in the 70s as much as it was because nobody trusted Luke Skywalker to give them a haircut. Can you imagine that sitting down in the chair? Han's like, all right, just a little. Would you take that blindfold off? And Luke's up there like, Vroom. and I don't know. I don't think I'd feel comfortable with that. I said just a little off the top. So speaking of space, I don't know if you know this fact about the space program, but the first animal that got sent into space was a monkey, which wouldn't you think it would be a dog? because dog's man's best friend. Dogs love to go for rides. Uh, into space is pretty much the ultimate ride, although maybe not that many smells. But if you think about it, if you keep thinking about sending dogs to space, you come up with the reason that they didn't send a dog into space. And that's because as soon as you set a dog at the controls for a rocket, He's going straight for your anus. It doesn't really help when, you're, when your first rocket doesn't even get as far as the moon. Now on to some cleaner jokes. I used to think um, two-in-one shampoo and conditioner was a really great idea, right? That it saves time. You only have to wash and rinse one time and you clean it and whatever conditioner does at the same time and then they also now they're making more than just two in one you can get three in one and there's body wash so all you really have to do is put it in your hair and then just let the shower rinse it over the rest of your body because it's body wash too the gravity helps you it's more convenient but i think there's a point where it gets to be too much it's probably about maybe five, because maybe you can add face wash, maybe that's a different kind of soap than body wash. But once you go beyond that, like, what else is there? I don't, I don't want them giving me a six in one that also has mouthwash and toothpaste in it, or like, start getting some, some peanut butter for breakfast. Like, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want that level of convenience.
I'd rather finish my shower than eat breakfast. Sometimes that face soap has like those little, it's a scrubby soap. Maybe it's sometimes hand soap has it too. I feel like a few years back that just started showing up in all the liquid soap. And so I used it for a while, like, oh yeah, I feel like my hands are getting so clean, getting all scrubbed. My face is feeling so exfoliated, which I think just means scrubbed. And after a few years getting used to that, I read that those little scrubby things are actually plastic. And that means that all that soap rinsing down the drain with plastic and it's not getting recycled. And I believe in recycling. I, I had to, I, I can't believe Bath and Body Works did that to me. I mean, I trusted them and they put plastic that I can't recycle into my soap. I just, I just assumed that's what they did with all the old bar soap. Just chop it up into little balls and dump it in the liquid. Find out, turn to find out, it's actually plastic. I didn't know. My other problem with soap is that stuff that comes out and it's already foam. I went a long time not really liking that. I thought it was just because like I know how much liquid soap I need to scrub my hands, get them nice and clean. But foaming soap is foam, so there's kind of more of it, and it's hard to judge the type. But really, I found out what, what bothers me most about it is that when you don't start with foaming hand soap, it turns into foam. So when you pump foam out of the dispenser, it's kind of like getting used soap. And I, I don't want someone else's soapy seconds. I want fresh, clean soap that's never been used before that I know how much I need to rub between my hands. Sometimes you're in a public bathroom, you don't have a choice, and you just hope that it hasn't been used by too many other people. Public bathrooms always have this really weird, totally inadequate toilet paper, too. So you, when you're done, when you're ready for it, you roll some toilet paper out, and you look at it, and it's like this wide but my hand is this wide. So I look at my fingers and I say, one of you's not gonna make it. It's either that or you get some pretty wild origami to fold a square this big into a square this big or however big you need it to make sure you cover your hand. Like usually I keep my thumb out of the way, but you gotta, you gotta form a full barrier. You also need more thickness. So it's like kind of a, turn your hand into a mummy, fold some kind of a paper crane, make sure it covers everything you need. You do the best you can, and then you hope that it, the, hand, the hand soap isn't foaming. When I was in high school, uh, as probably many high school students do, I had a job working at fast food. And when you start, you're kind of slow. You're not as good at it. So to help the customers not expect as much of you, they give you a name tag with your name and then the word trainee right above it. Right? So that, that has the effect of like, I think the idea is, you know, it's kind of like the student driver thing. Like, don't expect me to know everything. Don't expect me to be fast and do everything right when you want me to do it. I'm learning. I'll get better. But it also has the effect of when you tell people no, they don't believe you. So the restaurant I worked at was Dairy Queen. 
and I had someone order a blizzard with that had pecans as one of the ingredients. But the thing is, when you put pecans in a blender, they're not pecan-sized anymore. It chops them up. So this person came back and told me, you know, very shortly after I'd made it, because it was the only thing in the order, there's no pecans in this. And I remembered putting the pecans in it because I'm still a trainee. I have to think about everything I do, so I didn't miss that. But I said, okay, I'll throw this in a one away and I'll make another one. You can watch me make it. So I did that, handed, handed the customer the new pecan blizzard that was probably, that I'd made exactly the same as the one before. Another minute or two later, they come back. There's no pecans in this. So I just said, how about I scoop some pecans on the top? But I think the problem was really the trainee. Because I told them, I remember putting pecans in it. They get smaller. They're not full sized at that point. But they did not want to believe me. So once I had finished the part where I could remove the trainee from my name tag, I went all out and I put Mr. in front of it. No one doubted me again. One of my favorite uh, brands of food is Suddenly Salad. Because like, what other food comes with a surprise in the box and is also not aimed for children, right? Because you get all these ingredients, it's got everything you need, you throw it in a bowl, you stir it up, you get pretty excited, and oh, look at that! Suddenly it's a salad! I thought, I thought maybe it was like spaghetti, but no. Those, I mean, just with weird noodles. No, it's, it's a salad. I'm eating healthy tonight. I always thought it was weird that we say food poisoning, which is basically saying I ate poison, but I didn't do it on purpose. I thought it was food, and now I just feel awful. Like, I didn't just go outside and just pick a random berry off a tree I didn't recognize and eat that. No, I ate what I thought was food that I thought was safe to eat, but I trusted the wrong food. Like, is food poisoning that different from other poisoning? Like, you, either way, you definitely shouldn't have eaten that. But if you say food poisoning, it's kind of like an excuse built right in when you tell people what happened. So I guess that's convenient. Another fun thing with food is when flies land on it. And you think about where they've been, and that's not really appealing. But then, if you watch closely, I think they know what they're doing. You can see their little fly eyes looking around as they just kind of come up with, the, with their evil plan. Like, yeah, I'm going to go land on the manure, and then we're going to visit. Let's visit that picnic and just dance all over the watermelon. <laughs> yeah, these people are getting food poisoning. And this is the kind of stuff I think about all the time. It's just, just how my brain works, I guess. Sometimes I think about how a brain works and how brains are just divided into left and right hemispheres. But then each of them has a half of the body to control, which is kind of like two kids on a road trip drawing a line down the middle of the seat. Like, OK, this, this is mine. This area is mine. This half is yours. So like, I wonder if in the earlier designs of brains, 
they were it was more isolated side to side and the there wasn't the connection between the two hemispheres and they're like independently controlling the left hand to slap the right face or whatever and then somebody had to come in and make them get along and instead of like the idea of like let's just split the body down the middle you have this half you have this half instead they did the switch so the right brain controls the left half and the left brain controls the right half but they both have to live on each other's side so it's either really terrible for everyone or really good for everyone I think I might try that for parenting this is your side of the car but you're sitting over here I think that could work <laughs>